Hi, my name is Mark Galley. I'm with Think Reliability out of Houston, Texas. We specialize in incident investigation, root cause analysis. Our methodology is known as cause mapping, and I'm going to cover some specific points about improving cause and effect analysis, some of the differences um, about how a fishbone is different than a, than a cause map. Uh, Karo Ishikawa developed the fishbone. It is, is widely recognized. It's part of the six standard quality tools for ASQ, and it's part of every Six Sigma program. Uh, the fishbone diagram is also known as the Ishikawa diagram, or the cause and effect diagram. And Ishikawa is one of the first people to visually lay out cause and effect, and it's, it's one of the first tools that I learned um, in my career. Defining the problem is over on the right, and then it identifies uh, causes by category to the left, and then specific solutions can be uh, identified. Now, the five points I was going to cover is, number one, is the direction of cause and effect. Uh, the fishbone starts on the right, uh, in Ishikawa, Ishikawa began on the right, because Japanese reads uh, traditionally right to left. So he started with the problem, and then as he read across the page, he identified uh, causes of that problem. Uh, English speakers read left to right, so you'd actually start with the effect on the left, and as you ask why questions moving to the right, as you read across the page, the cause and effect relationship would have the effect on the left with the cause on the right. When you link these cause and effect relationships together with, with why questions, this is how you get a, a chain of events. So that the five whys is just a great way to think about um, cause and effect relationships and how they connect. You'd be starting with the problem or the negative effect over on the left and then asking why questions as you read across the page. So the arrows on a cause map or in this cause and effect um, analysis point to the left because that is the direction that time goes. You're starting with the problem on the left and asking why questions to the right. Process builds left to right and moves forward through time. So when it says step one, step two, step three, the arrows on a process map obviously would point to the right. Both the cause map and a process map build left to right, but cause and effect is moving backwards through time with why questions and a process map is moving forward through time. This simple analysis here for the Titanic sinking says the Titanic sank because the ship filled with water and it filled with water because of the openings in the hull and those openings are because the ship hit the iceberg and then the analysis can continue but it shows how cause and effect uh, links together. Uh, the second point is defining a problem um, is not really identifying the single negative effect. A problem is not really just one thing. If you ask people, for example, on the Titanic disaster, what's the problem, you get different answers. People see problems differently. So some people might say the problem is the Titanic sink and uh, sank, and some people may say that the ship hit an iceberg, and some people may say the problem is the rivets were, were too weak. You want to capture what the problem is and, and accommodate these different points of view that people have because they are points of view at this point. When it happened is all the timing. Where it happened is the location. And then defining an issue is really based on the impact to the organization's goals. So the ideal state for safety is zero injuries. On the Titanic, there were 1,500 uh, people that died. And in terms of damage to the ship, they lost the entire ship. The analysis step should begin with the impact to the goals. So it says the safety goal was impacted because 1,500 people died, and the property goal was impacted because we lost the entire ship. That's the first set of cause and effect relationships, and it comes from the impact to the goals. You then ask why questions, and you can see visually how the 1,500 people died because the Titanic sank and there weren't enough lifeboats, but the Titanic sinking is causally related to the loss of the entire ship. What people originally called the problem in the Titanic sinking is really just a cause of both of the goals being impacted. The Titanic sank because the ship hit an iceberg. So what people think of as the problem, when you ask them what's the problem, they're really just giving you one of the causes. An incident should really be defined by the goals to get agreement with the organization. Those goals really define organizational north. Then when you break the problem down into its parts, and you identify not enough lifeboats as being cause related, causally related to 1,500 people dying, a solution can be to add more lifeboats. This means that the Titanic could still sink, and you could have lost uh, fewer people or no people if there were more lifeboats, but that's not what did happen on the Titanic. There were insufficient lifeboats. 
um, the importance of focusing on, on cause and effect and not just the, the categories is that if you take something like the fire triangle and say that you have to have heat, fuel, and oxygen to produce that fire, the fuel, and the wood in this case, is going to fit within the materials category, and oxygen is going to fit under environment, and the fact that the flame was, was uh, not put out might be a specific task that someone missed, might be a people issue. You really don't want to separate the causes to produce a fire. You want to show how all three of those causes were required to produce that effect, because then you can identify specific solutions. So instead of categorizing the causes, it's important to show actual cause and effect uh, relationships. The fourth item is causes have evidence and possible causes don't. Uh, the fishbone allows for a lot of uh, speculation. In fact, a lot of people use the term brainstorming, but when you're investigating an incident, you would never really brainstorm the causes. You let evidence drive the investigation. Um, in a cause and effect analysis, you really want to identify what did happen. People might speculate and say, well, the seams on the, the Titanic the steel plates, they, they opened up because, well, it, it could have been the ship hit a dock, but it was in the middle of the ocean, so that wasn't it. The ship hit, was hit by another ship, but there no, was no evidence that the ship hit a reef, which was not the case. What they know from the evidence in the investigation is that these first three didn't happen, but the ship did actually hit an iceberg. The distinction uh, I want to make here is you have to investigate what did actually occur on an incident that's already happened. When people talk about what could have occurred, um, they're identifying possible causes. It's important to have, let evidence drive your investigation to minimize the speculation. The fifth item is, is how important it is to add detail. And on the, the fishbone diagram, it's, it's always this defined shape that, that looks like a, a, a fish. One of the advantages of, of laying things out visually in terms of cause and effect, you can begin with just very basic why questions with the safety goal impacted because 1,500 people died, because the Titanic sank, because the ship hit the iceberg. Um, that is an accurate analysis. It's just not very thorough. You can do a more detailed analysis, and this, this cause map we have here uh, is available on our website. It has 20 cause and effect relationships for the Titanic sinking, and then this analysis has 125. It's just like looking at a map of your city or your state or the country that you're in is all of the different maps are accurate, they're just at different levels. All of these cause maps are accurate, they're just at different levels of detail. If someone said the Titanic sank because they had an iceberg, it's absolutely true. It just doesn't have all the detail in the incident that the, the cause map with 125 causes does. Um, the five points in summary is that instead of building the cause map uh, instead of building the cause and effect analysis right to left the way uh, Japanese reads, it's um, a little bit uh, clearer to build the incident from a cause and effect standpoint, starting with the problem and then asking why questions as you read to the right. Um, problems are not really singular or single effects. They really have to be defined by the impact of the goals, and an incident typically impacts more than one goal in the company. You're not going to really categorize the causes. You want to identify specific cause and effect relationships. Um, you really don't want possible causes. You want people to focus on evidence to validate what did occur. And instead of um, using the, the categorization um, in terms of fitting the incident into that particular shape, it's important to scale it, to start very basic with an incident and then add as much detail as you need in that investigation. If you'd like more information about our methodology and, and bringing a cause mapping workshop either on site or attending one of our public workshops, um, certainly visit our website and you can download a copy of our free uh, cause mapping template in Excel uh, to, to use as a trial. Thanks very much. Don't hesitate to call if you have any questions.